ragazzi, ciao, siamo su iWords.com e siamo qui con, in occasione della radio italiana attrezzo degli Emerfall con Oscar e Pontus. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Welcome in Italy. Yeah, Welcome back. You. Welcome back in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you? Are you the same? Yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay. You find me? No? Ah, of course it is. I, I, we're on tour. You need an aspirin? No, no, no. no. no we're on okay. tour for the first time in many years and we had, I think about, at this time, about half of the shows we've done have been sold out already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's going really well. There's nothing to complain about. But maybe it's for the, the weight that you, in these three years, uh, you made uh, in the fans. So maybe. after three years, the fans uh, want to see. And the we line. didn't know, but yeah, that's, yeah. that seems to be the case. Yeah. Okay, let's talk uh, about uh, revolution. Yeah, uh, it's a, a question that many have ma made. It. But uh, the TR, what does it mean? Uh, where, where do you take this R? Well, the R is uh, a letter in the alphabet. Yeah. Which ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Maybe no, I. Uh, no, I understand the question. I'm just uh, <laughs> having fun. Uh, so no, the the um, the. The thing, the idea behind the title was that we, if you put it, put the spelling like this, it you could interpret it in any way you want. No. Like revolution is revolution. That's difficult yes, to interpret. Yes, but this, but uh, you have the R like this, and then evolution. It can mean either evolution or revolution or our evolution, if you uh, want to. Uh, uh, and right, right. It was somebody else who said something the other day. I can't remember what it was now, but they had a, a fourth interpretation of the title, which I hadn't thought yes, about yeah. before. So. I, I think it's open to interpretation, that's the whole idea. It's good interpretation uh, of the fact, but for you, this record is more uh, revolution or evolution? For you, I like Hammerfall... Uh, no, it's more evolution than revolution, because we did the revolution 15, 18 years ago, whatever yeah. it was, uh, you know, yeah. with the first album. Yeah. That was, that's when the revolution started, and it's, I, for me, that's how I interpret it. The revolution is still ongoing, it will uh, on, go on until the day yes. I die, pretty much. But, but the evolution is, it, it symbolizes this album for me. It's a, an evolution from what we started with and throughout all the stages and now we are here in 2015 and this is how Hammerfall sounds now. It, it's not how we sounded in 97, it's not how we sounded in 2011 either, it's how we sound right now. Ah, yes, sure. This record uh, features many comebacks uh, from uh, the past. <coughs> the producer uh, like Fred Nostrum or uh, the hardcover with uh, Anders Marshall and Hector. Ah. <laughs> on the cover. I was worried there for a second. I thought you were going to open. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the and uh, is there real, a little time travel for you? It, uh, is a, a choice? Uh, is an uh, all these are all uh, important ingredient to go back to the sound uh, that you need uh, from the early years? Uh, or? You, you wanted the, the, this person for this album, or is it? What do you mean, Frank Nordstrom? Yeah. No. Well, no, no. Well, the thing the is, the return of the cover. Uh, the, the whole, everything is linked together, obviously, like you yes. say. But what we wanted to do with Frederick was because he did the first two albums for yes, us, yes, yeah. and I know that he wanted to do the third one, but we uh, decided to go in a different direction because we wanted to evolve the sound a little bit. I mean, uh -huh. what Frederick does is really, really good. There's no question. That's not why we. We chose not to work with him back then. I think that's how we felt a little bit, but uh, but there's no animosity in, or anything like that. I've known him for 10 years before that, so it, it, there's no problem. Uh, but I think he was a little bit disappointed, and now we gave him the chance to, to be involved again on, yeah. on, on the Hammerfell album. But we used him as much more as a, a produce, a produ production consultant mm -hmm. uh, rather than the actual producer. And of course he did the mix of the album. But now we have Pontus in the band and you know, he, he knows yes, all this. We, uh, yeah. we, we ourselves uh, made uh, a little production in uh, Amazon. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. but <coughs> the thing is we, we have sort of the, the hammer the, the, the hammer for the yeah. studio now also. Yeah. Where we can do everything. You can divide the 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 goal of uh, each one uh, yeah and, and, and the thing is we can we can we work so easy because I, I know the technology yeah. and I know how I want it to sound and I, how I know Frederick wanted it to sound and you know of course he was a consultant all, all along the way we were recording but he wasn't there producing we were producing it ourselves so, yeah. so uh, 
the cover, uh, the return cover of uh, Act on Actor, and uh, in front of uh, Infected, that uh, was a little bit different. Uh, also, uh, you know <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> a little bit different, uh, like album, Hammer for album, uh, like teens uh, of lyrics, uh, like uh, cover, like uh, sound a little bit dark. Uh, so the fans uh, <coughs> remains a little. Uh, Stop it to, to well, wait, but uh, uh, so you you need Hector again uh, for uh, also well, for this. He or? was never gone, you know. He was in not on the cover, but he was inside yes, the yes, book. I know, I know. So he was there. Just that I think this this is a case of people listening with their eyes more than their ears. Yeah. Uh, like you said, there is a difference. There is a cer certain vibe to be infected. Absolutely, no question. Yeah. But part of that is the production. We used we did a lot of it ourselves. Uh, but then we had uh, an American do the mix, James Michael. And the, I like the mix very much. It, it really s is unique, but it's also very, not so German metal kind that we have always had yeah, in the yeah. past. And I think people reacted to that. Uh, but also uh, the, um, the fact that the album cover w looked the way it did. And uh, like the white cover with the hand coming up, that was the original co cover idea. And I love that cover. I mean, it's totally different from anything we've done, but it fit really well with the music. But Nuclear Blast didn't like it, so they asked us to do something different. And so this, you know how it is with compromises. Nobody gets satisfied in the end. So like, we hated it, Nuclear Blast hated it, the fans hated it, basically. <laughs> uh, went with this black slipcase kind of bullshit yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. they have. It's, it's the worst cover I've, I, that we've had since the Renegade single cover in uh, uh, 2000. Yeah. 2000. It's, yeah. Really, really bad. So what I mean is, uh, I think that people saw this a new Hammerfall album. Uh, wait, what? What? And then they saw the cover, and then they decided that they're not going to like the album. I, I, of course, people. Yeah, no, no, yeah. People didn't do that across the board, but I think a lot of people did it like this. Yeah, I, I asked it because uh, three, uh, almost four years ago at uh, Milan in uh, 2011, uh, I, we were uh, at the concert, huh? and the people say this fact that. Uh, was a little bit uh, uh, fearless of the cover of the, uh, this uh, sure. sound a little different. I understand so that. It, the, that the, the, the fan speaks view. about about, the, about that. Because, yeah, uh, no pro I understand the point of view. No problem. But what fans don't understand is that no, we know, have the right to decide what we do, and yeah, they yeah, yeah. they don't decide how we want things to be done. Sure. That's that was the whole thing. Uh, and as a fan of many bands, uh, mm -hmm. from you know, since I was a young kid. I know how difficult it is when the bands that do something you don't expect. But if you love the bands enough, you don't hate on them. You learn to like it with them. No, That's the it's difference. It's not hate. It's not hate. The yes, it was hate. It's a, it's a little bit uh, yeah, well, thinking because, uh, I, uh, for example, you think a, a cover of uh, Iron Maiden without Eddie. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. But a, Iron Maiden uh, has been around since 1980 or before that, yeah, but released yeah. albums since 1980. We had a, have a big legacy as well with Hector. I just think that we, yes. the people, should uh, uh, give us the benefit of the doubt once, and not not decide that the music sucks because they don't like the cover. Yeah. That's basically my whole point. Uh, yes, personally, uh, I, I liked uh, some some things, the, the new things, the in, in effect that mm. but they are all, always uh, but a question to to, to explain the defense. Uh, sure. Why? But, but if you look at the effect of the music that's on the album. The songs are just as good, if not better, than any other album that we've ever released. I think that people experience them differently, but that's because they experienced Renegades, let's say, yeah. for the first time when they were a teenager. Now they're uh, they were 11, 12 years older than that. Mm -hmm. They, of course, are going to listen to it differently. But if you look at the songs that we chose to play live and the way that they fit into the set list, there's no question that they, this is a typical mm -hmm. Hammerfall album. Yeah. And. Uh, for it is same the, the lyrics uh, of Revolution. There are many uh, yeah. themes from the past, right. like Hector uh, Hinz or uh, uh, Bushido, the way the warrior. Yeah. Or, uh, well, so if he's gonna if he's gonna be back, let's bring him back. For <laughs> <a course. laughs> yes, yes, but uh, in, in all these years, you, now you go, you go back to, to write uh, to songwriting uh, like the early years. But in, in these uh, twenty years. Uh, you change it the the way you write a song, or, Not really. or on, only well, you take an idea. Now computers help a lot. Huh? You say they make it easier for you to record ideas. On. Yeah. 
Whereas, I remember in the early days, and I'm sure you did this when, when you were playing as well, I mean, we didn't know each other in the 90s, but when, when you had an idea of a riff, you have to, had to play it over and over and over and over again until you remembered it, because that's the only way you were going to be able to make a song out of it, unless you had a four track, but I didn't do that when I was a, a teenager. I, I stole one, actually, from, <laughs> uh, from my uh, school that I was in. Uh, but uh, in my defense, it was almost broken. It worked, but I, it's broken now, it broke after a while. But it was only lying on top of one of the cupboards in, in the classroom, and I was there for three years. So I saw it maybe every, at least every week. It was dusty and nobody cared for it. So, yes, I took it. Sorry, but it did help me create some powerful songs, so it was really good in that respect. But it's not a, a good behavior, but I needed it very yeah. much at that time. Okay. But and this the time that we recorded, uh, I mean, wrote songs for Revolution, uh, Revolution was uh, it was a little bit different in that respect that uh, Pontus was much more involved than, than uh, he or anybody else has yeah. been before. Normally it's, it's always Joachim and I, we work together on our songs, and then a uh, song come from, comes from the outside, Joachim puts lyrics on it. Uh, but Pontus was, because the studio we recorded in is, is in, on my, uh, my property, it's like a, a building next to my house. And uh, it's it's called Castle Back Studios, by the way. <laughs> uh, but but uh, it was built like two years ago or so. and. Uh, uh, we did record everything except the vocals uh, in there. So dr drum recordings, guitars, and nothing, everything else works. If you know, if you have people who know what they're doing, like Pontus and Frederick, they, they really know their shit. So it was easy to get a great sound from, from that. But uh, also because Pontus is so uh, is so good with the technical stuff, where I'm really not, uh, I need his help with that as well. So he came down a couple of times to help me set up everything, make sure it worked. Uh, because and we had some couple of beers. We had a couple of beers, <laughs> which is how uh, many, the, many cor couple, the chorus from Bushido Kido, came about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> many, so we, couple of beer. many, many, many beers. Yeah. <laughs> I think at that time it might have been uh, Italian beer. I had one. Yes. It was this. Uh, what's it called? Peroni. Peroni, Peroni exactly. yes. Because uh, I had one case of Peroni loves, at one time, uh, and yeah. I believe it was he that loves night. Peroni, yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. Uh, but the thing was, I, 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 we were going to watch, go inside to the house and watch um, mixed martial arts in the UFC, which yeah. I'm a big fan of. He doesn't care really, but he, you know, he's a nice guy, so he came with me because it was, it was really important. I said, so we're going to go in at, at like 11:30 or something, and and when I said, now okay, let's do this one first, and then we go in, just, you know, we have one to start watching this, and it goes on well into the night. And Juan said, oh wait, let's play this riffing, and I have an idea here. And of course, you know, he had the vocal melody idea, and then we recorded it, and then we worked some more yeah. in it. So it took a couple of hours before we came A couple of beers. A couple of beers, too. A couple of perones. Yeah, perones. Yeah. No, it was, it was a really fun it's, evening. It's, it's just like coming in, and, and it just appeared, because I came down helping out. We were building on the studio and could, you know, getting every, everything together. And, we we end we just ended up in like oh, listen to this yeah. and then boom and something happened and yeah. uh, it was uh, that's, really, that's really creativity cool. yeah, yeah it's, you know it when it happens you can, like you don't uh, see it fix coming the, the idea yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. you can bounce idea yeah, yeah. It's very very fast and it's like boom, 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 boom. Uh, and normally yeah. I have to say for me is I don't work this way I can't work this way I thought I thought because I want to when I write something I have this whatever it is I want to chew on it I want to feel it I want to listen to it play it and you know, leave it alone for a couple of days, come back to it, listen to it again, and then I know if it's good or not, you know. Yeah, you, you uh, prefer the old man? Uh, yeah, well, I guess so. I mean, <laughs> you're setting my ways. I'm 43 now. So. Uh. <laughs> but uh, when, this, when we were doing this, there was a lot of back and forth. I mean, we didn't use everything that we did, of course. Mm -hmm. There are songs that wasn't that good, but we had, uh, like you say, um, I, I don't know if it's English or Swedish, but we had, we had our hands on the pulse. You know, we knew, we, we kind of instinctively, instinctively knew that this was good. I remember when this uh, Bushido uh, <laughs> chorus yeah. came, I couldn't stop listening to it. Yeah. It was just so fucking good, it was ridiculous. I, I was singing it so loud, yeah. and yeah. The, you know, the For windows were cracking. <laughs> <laughs> I was really, that was like an instant, you, you yeah. know directly, this is something that's worth saving. I mean, you don't, didn't know it was going to be the singer or anything, I just knew that this is a fucking good chorus that we're going to use. Yes. And that usually, it's not always, uh, I, I don't always feel it right, right away. I need a bit, bit of time to, to make up my mind. I can feel if it's a good, a good in, uh, it's going in a good direction or a bad direction, but if it's actually good or actually bad, it takes a little. Yeah. Uh, another, another thing uh, that I like much in uh, Revolution is the, the, the choice 
the, the what? Chorus, chorus. Ah, chorus. Yeah, okay, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big chorus that the people can, uh, right. can sing, can uh, sing with you, and yeah. uh, so it's more friendly to to, to okay. listen, yeah. to listen sure. because. It, and, uh, yeah, that that's another thing I forgot to say about infected because and exactly your point. That yeah. is a little bit more difficult to get into this yeah. album. If you hear it the first time, you might not remember so much, but after a while, it really yeah. sticks with you. Because in fact, I, I found the effect more raw. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. It, it's not yeah. not uh, catchy. Uh, or not in the same way. More, no. Absolutely uh, not. Powerful, more uh, raw, uh, like uh, like like metal. Not not, right. not the, the the only chorus or uh, the same. Uh, no, but I think that's one of the things I really wanted to do with Infected uh, yeah. when I write this, wrote the songs uh, was to avoid the obvious. You know, we have, yeah. of course we're going to have some elements that are hammerful. That's what makes a hammerful hammerful. But mm -hmm. to avoid the obvious when it comes to songwriting and not always just have verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and then go verse. You yeah, know, yeah, just yeah. mix it up a little bit. It's like the standard. That's what I uh, standard of yeah. but, and okay. I try, try to maintain some of that for Revolution, but not, not the same level of it. Another question that, uh, as always, you know or know you, you don't like the label of our metal band. No, no, I don't. I don't refuse to answer any questions. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, the, the question is, uh, is always the same. When uh, at the early first or second, uh, first of all, first second uh, record, uh, or uh, when uh, the people, a fan, uh, a listener of metal, uh, Look uh, and, and uh, listen your uh, your music. And look your your record. Of it. Uh, a powerful hammer, a powerful uh, warrior, sure. a knight. Uh, no? Uh, dragon's life bleeding. Hey, it's power metal. Or no, no. Well, I don't. I don't. <laughs> the impression is the there. connection. Of course, but the thing is, power metal. When we started out, yeah. the power metal that existed were bands like Jack Panzer, U.S. power metal. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that vein. It was nothing what we were doing. So, and also, like I think we probably, uh, you probably read something, or if I talked about it before, I don't know. But power metal. For me, I mean, uh, the music style that we started out with was heavy metal, because that's where we began. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when when I formed Hammerfall, which was in 1993, heavy metal was a very unlike uh, genre. You couldn't, if you admitted that, oh, I like heavy metal, I play Mr. heavy Horn, metal. Remember, I'm older than you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, but, but that, that was I'm a joke, old, right? One year older than the Right, <laughs> but, but everybody there is yeah. not one year so older than So you're 26. <laughs> Yeah, 20, yeah, yeah, 26 yeah, and yeah, half. Okay. Half, 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 half. <laughs> half 26. Yeah, perfect. He born in uh, 85. Huh? Right. So well. he, he jumped. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you know, the point is that it's, it was something we, we embraced proudly because yeah, this yeah. is our heritage. And then we call ourselves, ourselves heavy metal for many years and fought, fought for it really hard, like, to defend it. And then somebody says, no, no, this is power metal. Well, fuck you, it's not power metal. We decide what our music is going to be called. <laughs> So that's, this is why I have such a hard time with it. I understand why people call it that. I just don't agree with it. Yeah, but uh, at the beginning, uh, as uh, all, all, uh, all the, the boy, all the, which were, uh, which were the, the, the most influenced uh, band that you were listening to? Uh, in the beginning, before, before, yeah, before, it, uh, before you start uh, all, all the business, right. so it's the same as now. It, it's, yeah, it hasn't yeah. changed much. I mean, for, for me, it, it's heavy metal, uh, always uh, Judas Priest, then. except Stormreach, that type of thing. German, men, much yeah. unknown German metal bands. Uh, King Diamond and Merciful Fate has always influenced me greatly. Judas Priest? Oh, of oh, course. Yeah. Judas yeah, Priest yeah. and Accept are, are like my two main ones. They're very much but twin guitar music. Yeah, this is why Pontus fits so well into the band, because he was playing with Pontus before, as you know, which is not really... I mean, it's less heavy metal than Hammerfall. Like, if you it's it's more melodic. melodic. Yeah. Huh? But, but I, I was uh, surprised to hear of his... I mean, I, I shouldn't be like this, because I know that you people are multi-layered. It's just very easy to think that Pontus is playing in the pools, that's all he likes. Oh, you know, because... Th that's basically what it would be for me. I play metal in Hammerfall because that's what I like. There are a few things I do like more apart from that, but that, never mind. Never mind. So, but it, I, when he, yeah, when we uh, we asked him if we were started talking about joining Hammerfall and stuff, I found out that he's he, he's a really big fan of Accept, for example, of, of Jewish Priest. He came from. I mean, he's a little bit older than I, but same era anyway of, of, of uh, metal music. So that's why he fits so so well into the band. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, 
because we have uh, here a Pontus de Trap. I, I didn't know who of you right, came right. into the interview. Yeah. Uh, tell uh, when and how you asked to answer them for uh, what happened. Uh, there were uh, so many, many years ago. Yeah, actually, as Oscar said, I played in the Polos before and we supported Hammerfall on the Threshold Tour in 2007. And along the way, you know, <clears throat> I've known Anders yeah. uh, Johansson. I've known him for a long time before that because I worked together with Ingmar Malmsteen and everything. And we got along very well and we were talking about accept. And yeah. I was talking with Joachim and I have share a common interest of food. So, you know, everything became sort of, uh, <clears throat> you know, everything worked on that tour and it felt good. And then... Joachim called me and said, uh, I'm, Hi, Pontus, uh, I just want to ask you. This was like a year later, right? About a year later. <coughs> yeah, maybe not even. <coughs> no. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Joachim calls me and said, Hi, ah, uh, uh, just uh, to keep this confidential, but do you know any guitar players in Stockholm? Because they were living <laughs> in Gothenburg. And I'm like, Yeah, I know a couple. Why? No, uh, we're looking for a guitar player in, in Hammerfall. And I said, I'm a guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> I know one. Yeah, I know one. Hey. Let me check in the in the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I know him. Yeah, I yeah know and, him. and then 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 we decided, you know, and Joachim, I already quit Poodles at the time, so uh, uh, or decided that I will quit. Uh, you hadn't actually done it, I think. No, I I've, I've told some of the guys in the band, but oh, okay. I didn't. We didn't do it official until. But um, yeah, then I decided to go down and were playing a little bit and you know and, and it worked out and then you guys I think Joachim called me when we were doing a, yes. our own headline tour with the crew yeah out in Hanover or something yeah, Joachim called me in. do you want to go yeah, do you want to go <laughs> okay <laughs> that's right so that's yeah and we did audition a couple of guitar players for that time uh, at, at least a few of them and we I didn't know Pons before the the Pools tour that we did but uh I, he's the, the one guy in Harrowfall that I think will get along with anybody, no matter where you are from or who you are. I mean, it's, I don't know, Pontus is the kind of guy who will uh, just to sit down and talk to somebody. And say, Hello, how are you? Yeah. And I, I'm just not like that. It's very <laughs> different for me. But, but this is one thing that, they, that's why you see Pontus always with, uh, hanging out with with different parts of the, of the touring, or maybe just standing around talking shit with a, 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 a local crew guy who he has never met before. This is also not for me at all. That's why I'm yeah. so, uh, you know, fascinated by it. But but he that's that's made him fit really well into Hammerfall too, because he had uh, a way of connecting with everybody on a, with different uh, things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another important question is that uh, your feeling on. on Business in, in, in business, uh, music business, uh, 20 years. So, at the, in this 20 years, uh, how is changed the music business? How the web and internet uh, has changed the, the way to, to well, approach it? If you just put it this way, the first time we released an album, uh, getting a gold record for an album was still a huge deal. Now it's nothing because you know, it lowered all the yeah. levels all the time, so it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, and, and even if you <coughs> you do get a gold album, that just means that uh, a small amount of people bought the album. Before it was uh, quite a big amount of people that bought the album, but then again, you didn't, never know with Spotify or, or the downloading stuff. You never know how many people actually did get the album in the end because so many Spotify is a Swedish company, so obviously it's really big there. But it's getting big in, in many other places as well, so it's very difficult difficult to gauge how many uh, people actually are into the album, uh, how many different people are into the album. I mean, it's easy to count record sales, right? Yeah. But that, So that's the big big difference, uh, business-wise. And also the, the cake was, this. I mean, the cake in the 80s was almost unlimited. Yeah. When we started out in the 90s, it, it had grown, I mean, uh, shrunk to a certain size. Uh, and that's why I think, that's my personal theory, but that's why people stopped flying business class and stop doing uh, a bunch of stupid things and buying cars and you know crashing hotel rooms left and right because they had, didn't have an unlimited amount of money anymore. There was uh, quite a, yes, uh, you know, you can see the, see the limit. Also, also but, but wait, yeah, I'm not yeah, finished. Uh, 
now the the cake com uh, now compared to the the early 2000s is this small. Yeah. You can't get anything anymore. Uh, so <clears throat> I, I think I don't know what's going to happen in the future with this. I mean, it's getting very very difficult for bands to survive on, on, on this uh, small amount of money that you get. And then doesn't make it easier when you come to Italy and the fucking concession in this place to, that we get to, to sell shirts here. We have to raise our prices to even get a fraction of what we've spent on, yeah. on, on it in the uh, to get it back. And that go that of course is taken out of the fans' pocket. And we give money to I don't know who it is promoter venue or whatever the fuck it is. Somebody takes almost forty percent of our gross income from selling merchandise because it only to allow us to do it. And I think that's totally wrong in every level, and especially when the cake is shrinking. Oh, it's, yeah. it's so bad that I don't know if we're going to come to Italy again. Because, not just because of this, but partly. It's all the administration bullshit. The fans are excellent. It's uh, one of my favorite places to play, but you have to get, yeah, I have to find economic stability anymore. I don't want to be ripped off. That's basically what I'm saying. We play in Germany. You, you have a concession in every country. That's fine. You know, a little bit of money goes that way. But at almost 50%, it's, it's, uh, it's not okay. It's not fair anymore. So things like this turns us off of touring in, in countries when it is like this. And Italy is one of those countries. Yeah. I'm sorry, that it's just, that's no, the way it is. It is and right, I think right. people I know, need I know, I know. to hear this as well. Because they think that, oh, this shirt is really diff expensive. But yeah, it is, but it's not our fault. I mean, we need to get at least get the money back uh, from what you paid yeah, for yeah. It. It, it. And if you put, we have a certain amount of, of um, money that we need to, to come in from the merch as well for us to be able to actually do this for a living, you know? We need this money to survive, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's just one country, one show, but it, it adds up. And it, for me, it's more about the principle than anything else. Uh, and you know, you're, you're Italian, corruption has always been a big problem for you. Yes, yes. And this is part of the, I mean, this for me is corruption, even if it's out in the open. You see, Italy is a big problem in, in every part of yeah. uh, the industry or uh, commercial or everything. Yes, I know. I know. Sorry about the going. <laughs> no, 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 no. We just talked about this cut, before. Cut, I cut, really. Cut. Uh, <laughs> you can tell, it's fine. I don't. I stand by everything I said. Yeah. But it's just. It's sad that it has come to this. Yeah, That's yeah. what it basically the It's hard to. It, it's hard to survive because too much money disappearing. And, and the thing is, also like you said, you know, back in the day, you released an album, and you released an actual album with ten songs yeah. that you knew. 50,000 bought that album, for example. Yeah. Nowadays, you don't know if they bought one song or two songs, or maybe just listen to half a song on Spotify. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, you don't yeah. know anymore. And that is that is a problem. Like, it's, you need you could also count on those actual album sales, right? Like, okay, you never know how many albums you're gonna sell, but at least you had some idea of it. Now we have no idea how, because we don't get anything from Spotify. It's, it's a ridiculous mm -hmm. low amount. Yeah. Uh, but, but also. The touring costs, they haven't decreased any. I mean, it costs still as much as it did to touring 10 years ago as it does now, probably even more. But the, in the, the money coming in has de uh, shrunk to a little, a tiny amount. So it, it, that is the problem with, with this. And this is what I, what I was getting at before. If, uh, I, don't, I don't know how the metal or music industry are, is going to uh, be able to survive this in a couple of years. We are going to probably get the worst case scenario, but with uh, elevated music, you know, people who just do music without any soul because that's how, how they can do it uh, the cheapest way. And the passion will be gone. Uh, just two, two questions? Uh, is there any time? No, it's not, no problem. And the okay. Last, last right. question? Yes, okay. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, right. <laughs> that's two, two questions. Uh, you go back in tour now for uh, after uh, some years, and uh, you did you enjoy again uh, tour after so many years, uh, 20 years of tour? Uh, every time like the, like the first time, or is changing? Uh, well, it's never like the first time. You, know. you, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you are older, uh, so uh, a long tour is, uh, is more uh, heavy to support or the, the, the joy to, to make. Uh, yeah, but uh, I tour a lot also on the side doing some other stuff, and, and it's the, the, the hardest part is 
you're getting older and and the thing is you have a family and everything yeah. and being away from the family is no fun in the end if you're away for a very long period but i have to say going out this time it's been fantastic because it's you know even if i've been touring a lot the last years when the other guys haven't been touring it's like going out and do this and do your stuff it's it's special it is special it's like wow yeah yeah every night is okay every night is not perfectly fun but if but if we didn't have the shows at night like if they weren't as good and as fun to play and if it wasn't as good as fun and as fun to play for for the kind of audiences that we do we would never do it obviously I mean I've been I've been complaining a lot yeah, in this yeah. issue I know that <laughs> but the fact remains that when you stand on stage all that is gone yeah, you yeah. know because you see the people in, in the crowd you see how they react to the music you see how much they love what you're doing the same way I love in the being in a concert for Jewish streets for example I see the same look in the people's eyes so I then it makes it everything worth it okay. So let's uh, finish uh, the interview. Uh, did you have uh, brew the whiskey and M4 whiskey? Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, um, Why the, uh, we're not allowed the, the idea of uh, Hammer for Whiskey? <laughs> uh, Joachim is a yeah, mastermind man, he did everything. Only for sweet, eh? Only for sweet. Uh, well, they sell it in Germany too, through yeah. Nuclear Bast, but I don't think, I don't know. Do you know, alcohol laws are so strict and so difficult to get around, so yeah. we, we can't sell it here. It's impossible. No, we have to, yeah, it's only, and it's almost the sold the out too. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I like it very much. It's it, very, very nice. Yeah, yeah. It's apparently, yeah, it tastes oh, good. It's, it's, it's amazing. Though. A couple of whiskey after a couple of beer, uh, like Bushido. Bushido. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bushido is not a bad name for a beer. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. A couple of Bushidos. Yeah, yeah. exactly. A <laughs> couple of warriors. Uh-huh. Oh. So right. we terminated the interview. So yeah. many, many thanks uh, to Pontus. Thank you. No and problem. The, thanks the, for having us. The monuments of Hammer for Oscar. Eh, ragazzi, ci sentiamo alla prossima. L'intervista è finita. And, uh, can you see something to our uh, reader of uh, heavyworld.com? Yeah, do we introduce ourselves? Or, or oh, no. as, as, as you wish. As say our. something nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, I don't know if you went to the show tonight or not, but if you did, uh, I really hope you won't, didn't regret it. And I can say without any hesitation whatsoever, I just hesitated, but I didn't remember the word. <laughs> But that this lineup that you see right now, not only is it totally unique, you will never see this again because Stefan is a pilot and all that, but also because this is the best sounding hammerfall that, that you have ever seen and heard. And it's just such a great time being on stage. I had fun on all the show, uh, tours that we've done, but this is, uh, is a unique thing, a feeling, just not just for the fans, but for us on stage too. It's really, really cool. So I hope you went there. And if you didn't go there, you missed one hell of a show. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>